Hello and welcome to the Symantec IT Management Suite Technical Overview Series. This video presentation will provide a technical overview of the hardware-based license tracking features found in IT Management Suite. You can edit the license rule while creating a software license or by editing the existing software license resource. Every license rule provides settings that help calculate the license consumption. The license can be created or edited by selecting the link under the license type in the software product summary view. You are then able to edit the specific license you want to modify. Once you are in the Edit License page, you can select the license rule link to edit or create the rule. The per processor core license type specifies the license consumption calculated as per processor or per core for each installation on a device. You may use this option if the license consumption is calculated per processor or per core. The calculation field is where you would select the per processor or per core as the base for making calculations for the license consumption. The Affinity Adjustment Table is where you would define the device name, affinity, and point value for calculating the consumption of licenses. The number of licenses consumed by a single license is the multiplication of affinity number of processors or cores and the point value. You should note that non-specified devices are considered as unauthorized and installation of the software on unauthorized devices is termed as unauthorized usage. For the calculation of licenses consumed by unauthorized devices, the point value is taken as the maximum of the entered point values and the affinity is taken from the inventory information for each device. As you make changes through the affinity table, the entered by and entered date information is filled in. In this scenario, we will show the processor-based license tracking abilities of IT Management Suite. In this scenario, we will track Microsoft SQL Server 2012 standard. We have noted through inventory that it's been installed on three servers. In the case of processor or core-based licensing, usage is implied by installation. All processor core information was gathered by inventory solution. Five processor-based licenses have been purchased. We've established authorized servers, in this case SMP80, and W2K12-1 are assigned licenses. In the end, we would like to see the resultant state. We will start in the software product summary. We will now select the status of the software product. In this case, it indicates that the software product is licensable, but a license is not available. We can add a license by selecting the Click to Add License link. This brings up the software product. You can select the Licensable Product box to indicate that licenses are available for this product. Press the Add License button. This allows us to create a new software license. We'll now edit the license rule. We'll provide it with a name similar to what the software product and software license is. And we'll indicate that it, this is per processor, and in this case, we'll choose per processor core licensing. We can indicate what type of licensing under the calculation field. We now move to the affinity table. This is where we will choose our resources that we'd like authorized for this software license. Once we select these resources, the affinity table will automatically fill in the affinity and point value assigned to these computers. The three systems each have one processor in them. This can be changed at any time. Now that we've chose our resources, they're attached to this offer license. We will save the license, and you'll notice now that it's part of the software product. This is associated a software license to a software product. At this time, we have no information about the purchases that were made for this license. By pressing the Edit icon, we can go back into the license and enter purchase information. We can enter a quantity, in this case five, and a cost of those five licenses. We can also enter the start date and expiry date of this contract. You should notice at the bottom of the page that the total purchase licenses and total cost of all purchases has been summed. You will now notice that the software product summary has changed. 
we also see that the status has changed to Needs Attention. In this case, it's showing that two licenses are underutilized with a potential savings. We can review the License Usage and License Utilization Summary page. In this case, it's showing that there are five active licenses. Under those active licenses, we have two that are underutilized, three that are utilized, three of them that have no tracking data. This is normal in these situations because we do not do application metering or application usage tracking on servers. It also indicates that there are two available. This portion of the demonstration will show how the software product summary changes dependent on what is entered for license compliance. We will start by going in and editing the license. We'll do a simple change to the expiry date of this license to indicate that it's expired. If an expired date is detected, it will change from black to red. This will also change in the software product summary. It'll show an overutilized status on the outside ring to show all expired licenses. We will now go in and change the license to show compliancy. We'll move the date back to a non-expiry date. We'll simply change the purchased amount to match what is actually installed to show the status. And you'll notice that the software product summary shows compliant now, where the outside ring shows all items utilized. In this demonstration, we show core-based license tracking through IT Management Suite. We would like to track Microsoft SQL Server 2012 standard. It is installed on three servers in the environment. Again, usage is implied by installation. And the CPU core totals have been gathered by inventory solution. Five core licenses have been purchased and entered into the system and certain servers have been authorized. In this case, SMP 8.0 and W2K 12-1 are assigned the licenses. And we would like to see the resultant state. In this case, we'll start with the software product Microsoft SQL Server 2012 Standard Edition. We'll select the product in the Software Product Summary view and notice that it's action required. This is indicating that the product is licensable, but the license is not available. In this case, we have to indicate that this is a licensable product. Notice that usage tracking is off and installation implies usage. We'll now go and add a license to this software product. We'll first indicate that it is a licensable product by checking the box. Then we will press Add License, where we can create a new software license. We will give it a name similar to the software product name. We will select our start and end dates for the software license. Provide a comment if required. Enter our purchase information. Notice that it adds a suffix of purchase number one on the end of the purchases. This is done for all new purchases. We'll enter our quantity, in this case five, and our cost we can also add additional purchases. And also notice at the bottom of the page that it has summed the purchases, both the licenses as well as the cost of the purchases. We will now create our license rule. We will then choose per processor core. And in this case, we're going to indicate that it is based on per core calculations, not per processor. We will then move to the Affinity Adjustment table, and you'll notice that we cannot press the OK button or continue with the process until we've defined resources. We will now add the resources. You will notice that it automatically entered the number of cores existing in each device. This can be modified at any time. And also notice that the point value is always a default of 1. This factor is the multiplier between affinity and point value to give the license values in the end. You will also notice in this case that there is a single license entry. This license entry has 10 licenses at a summed cost. 
We will now notice that the software product summary changes. It is changed to needs attention as the status. And this indicates that there are two licenses underutilized with a potential savings. We also need to consider that the active licenses for this license is 10, and that counts for 10 core licenses. You'll also notice that the license utilization and license summary graph indicates their totals as cores. In this case, we have eight cores that are utilized between the three servers. Since we have 10 active licenses, this shows that there are two that are underutilized. The indicator showing eight cores for no tracking data is normal, as we do not install the application metering plugin on servers. In this scenario, we would like to track core-based licenses with Affinity Adjustment. We will be tracking Microsoft SQL Server 2012 standard. We've noted that it's been installed on three servers. Again, usage is implied by the installation of the software. The processor and core inventory has been gathered. We have purchased five core licenses. And we've established which servers would be authorized. In this case, SMP 8.0 and W2K 12-1 were assigned core licenses. We also have information on the SQL Server Affinity. This can be entered through manual entry, even a data connector or custom inventory. And in the end, we need to see the resultant state. In this scenario, we will show tracking of per core licensing using the affinity values. We will start by going into the software product and editing the license product. We will then edit the software license. We will go into the license rule, and as you can see by this display, we have the original affinity numbers that came from inventory. Earlier, we received an email from one of the SQL administrators giving us an inventory of what processor cores were used for each server. In this case, we have the Microsoft SQL 2012 configuration for each of the servers. For example, SMP 8.0 has four cores found in inventory, even though it's only using two for SQL. We can use this data to get a more precise count of SQL licenses. We can now return to our affinity counts within our software license. These can easily be modified through manual methods. Even though the entered by and entered date are filled in automatically when a modification is made, it's a good practice to put additional information into the comments field to indicate proof of the affinity numbers. Now that the affinity numbers have been adjusted, we will now look at the license utilization. The status has remained at needs attention, but you'll notice now that there are more licenses available. You'll now notice that there are six licenses that are underutilized. This has a higher potential savings. This is due to the number of cores used in the affinity settings. There are now six available licenses, which corresponds to the six underutilized licenses. There are four utilized cores in total, and you'll notice that there are six underutilized licenses remaining. For this part of the demonstration, we will assume that a list of authorized servers has been released to the administrator. We will start by going back into the license. We will edit that license using the Edit Pencil. We will then go into the license rule. There has been some indication that W2K12-2 is not authorized for the SQL Server license. In this case, we will remove it from the license. You will now notice that there's a section in this graph that shows unauthorized usage. Not only that, but also overutilized. You will notice that W2K12-2 is unauthorized. Since these are per core calculations, we will notice that overutilized is the total amount of cores that were assigned from inventory for W2K12-2. You will also notice that the status has changed to action required. Not only are there two licenses that are overutilized, but there are also seven licenses that are underutilized.
these underutilized licenses would have potential savings. If you would like to know more about IT Management Suite, please visit the following links.